Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sisilowati. I'm an excellent Power BI enthusiast with decades of business experience. Welcome back to my channel. This video is a continuation of my life-changing shortcut series, which I started publishing last week. There are so many Excel shortcuts available and I feel that it's impossible to learn everything at once. Thus, I've selected those that I found most useful, my go-to shortcuts, which had helped me to become not only faster, but also more accurate in developing Excel reports as well as financial models. I've grouped the shortcuts into five cohorts and explained the first three last week. And in this video, I will explain shortcuts using function keys and my top three favorites, F2, F4, and F9. And then I will share with you the new shortcut that I only just learned this year, as well as an old shortcut that I learned from decades ago, which is still available for use even today. Now let's move on to shortcut using function keys. Function keys are F1 to F12 located at the top of your keyboards. I am not going to go through everything. The three that I use most frequently are F2, F4, and F9. And those are the three that I will focus on in this video. So let's get started with F2. Yeah. F2 is super useful, especially for sense checking your formula. F2 shortcut is good for auditing. So click any cell, press F2, and it tells you that formula is referencing which cells. It's very useful for sun checking total, for example. And look at this. You can quickly visualize which cells are being included in the sum formula. And look at that. North Asia is missed out. So we can quickly fix it by dragging that purple rectangle. Now let's sun check the next cell. Is that correct? Oh, that's correct already. So that's good. F4 is probably my personal favorite. It has two functions. The first one is to repeat the last action. For example, look at this chart in here. I may want to recolor this chart with something else. And I'm going to pick a custom color. And I'm going to set the RGB with 20 and 192, 192. Let's say I want to repeat that to the other charts. I can redo all those steps, retyping RGB, or simply press F4, and we're done. The other function of F4 is to quickly add dollar sign, such as this. Yeah, so if I type equal uh, that formula D5, and I will quickly add dollar sign, all I need to do is press F4 once, and the dollar sign is there. If I press it one more time, one of the dollar sign disappear. If I press it twice, then it swap to the other side. Press it again, no dollar sign. So in this instance, I want dollar sign for both uh, in front of D and in front of five, so that my cell reference is fixed. Yeah. In an Excel file, there is option to set formula into manual or automatic, or automatic accept data tables. Uh, when it's automatic, it means that whenever you change an input, for example, in here, I'm going to change it to 20, that sum over here automatically calculates. But when you're in manual, if I change the input to 2000, say, that number doesn't change. Yeah? It will only change if I press F9 to calculate the entire workbook. Or the other option is to only set Excel to calculate one sheet only instead of the entire workbook by pressing Shift F9. So say for example in here, I'm going to type 100 and if I press Shift F9, it will only calculate these sheets. So let's try this. I'm going to make that 20,000. Yeah. Notice how it hasn't changed yet. And I'm going to flick back into this sheet. I'm going to press Shift F9. Now, it's reading 130, which is the correct number. And in this page, it's still not calculating because I only press Shift F9. So I need to press Shift F9 one more time in here before that calculates. And you may be wondering, why would someone want to set things to manual? And that's because sometimes if your Excel spreadsheet is really big, it takes a long time for Excel to finish calculating. And you may not want Excel to always calculate every time you change an input. 
you may want to calculate only at the end and that's when calculation option setting to manual can be useful and that's when F9 shortcut becomes super useful when you want to calculate the entire workbook or shift F9 to calculate only the, um, the sheets. There is also one more use of F9. If you press F9 whilst highlighting a section of your formula, it will display the value of that formula. This feature is super useful for auditing a long formula as well as for sense checking your work along the way. Say you want to sense check a formula, the gross margin percentage, and you can see that it's PNLC9 divided by PNLC8. And one way to do that is by tracing through what C9 and C8, go to the PNL tab and look at, okay, that's C9 and that's C8, or just stay in here and highlight and press F9 so you can see the value and highlight that and you can see the value and see if that's within your expectation and after you finish you can just press escape key and you're back to original and the same goes with longer formulas say for example this trading profit formula has we look up something something multiplied by PNL say 20 plus PNLC 22. And if we want to know what's the output of that VLOOKUP, we can highlight the entire VLOOKUP formula, press F9, and then multiplied by PNLC 20, you can highlight that as well, so you can see that being multiplied by 0.1, and then add it with something else, you can highlight that, press F9. And if you want to, you can highlight the whole thing and press F9 one more time, and you get your result. I want to go back to the original formula, just press escape and you're back. A shortcut that I recently learned this year is Ctrl T, uh, which is useful to convert your data into table and also give you the options to format to any color that you want quickly. Now there is an added benefit of converting your data into table because when you make charts out of table format, your chart can be automatically updated as you add new rows. The same with pivot table, your pivot table will be automatically updated as you add new rows when it is formatted as table. And you can quickly do that with Ctrl T. Now this is an old shortcut. It has been there for a long time. You can press Alt 11 to bring you to VBA views so that you can quickly see what sort of macros is embedded within a worksheet. And from here, you can run the macro if you want to by pressing that run button. Or if you don't want to run the macro, you can press alternate F11 back and you're back to your Excel window. Congratulations, you have now reached the end of the video. On reflection, F2 and F9 are the two shortcuts that I found the most useful in helping to improve my speed and accuracy when developing new reports and financial models. Whereas F4 has helped me to save so much time by allowing me to repeat last action quickly for table and charts, therefore my top 3 favorite shortcut has to be F2, F4, and F9. Please do share with me which one is your favorite shortcut as well as other shortcuts that you may find useful in your day-to-day -day life. See you next time!